Namaste. Sasikal Aslam Alekum. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me for our practice of yin today. Um, apparently, my hair looks a bit wild. <laughs> it is wild because it's. Oh, Danny, you need to mute everyone. Thank you. Um, it's wild because it's pouring with rain outside. It's very stormy weather here. And I've been out there, so I've like I've been in that stormy, um, that stormy season. Very appropriate. So our practice today, my friends, let's have available all of the props that you might need and some that you may not use. It's always great to have them with at hand. The beauty of practicing in your own home is that there will be cushions, blankets, pillows, all around that you can use. So something that's like a bolster, large pillows, rolled up comforters, rolled up blankets, uh, folded blankets, cushions, and then we'll use those to prop up. So essentially in our practice, what we want to do is to be able to use the props available to support us to access the subtle levels, the deeper um, inner layers of the self so that we're moving beyond the sort of, we're moving beyond the physical into the subtle energy field. And often what happens is if we practice a pose without seeking support, we can feel very tense, become very aware of being in the asana, aware of very much of the limitations of our body within that asana. And therefore what happens, the mind becomes fixated with the physical experience. So we want to support the mind to move beyond the physical experience so that we come into a meditative, inward reflective space. And that's why we use props in yin, and often why restorative yoga really deep, uh, deepens that sense of relaxation um, and that prepares the mind for being free of the tyranny of our thoughts. We are in the full moon cycle. Well, full moon is tomorrow, full moon in Pisces. And so our practice today is going to be drawing upon all the elemental energies of water most strongly associated with the full moon in Pisces. So let's start by coming into our seated Sukhasan. Perhaps you are supported on a block or a cushion or folded blanket. For our mudra, we're going to adopt the Swadhisthan mudra. The Swadhisthan is the sacral area chakra, which is around the pelvic area around the bladder and the kidney meridian. So we're working with the sacral chakra. We'll be working with the kidney and bladder meridian. So really drawing upon the energetic center here, which is where the element of water is seated. So to come into the Swadhi San Mudra, let's interlace all of our fingers. Um, in fact, let's do it this way around. So let's, I, pardon me, taking the middle finger, cross it over the index as if you're crossing your fingers. And then interlace the ring and the little finger and bring the tips of the index together and the tips of the middle, fin, um, middle finger nails together. And then bring the thumbs to touch the middle finger tip. So perhaps I'll come a little bit closer so you can see that process. So my friends, cross the index, uh, cross the middle finger over the index, interlace the ring and little fingers, bring the tip of the index together and then the fingernails of the middle fingers come together and then draw the thumb to the tip of the finger. This is the Swadhisthan Mudra. So I hope that was helpful. You, know, you often don't see my face that close up to the camera. <laughs> oh. And then sit with the mudra in the lap here. 
what might be quite supportive here is if you place a cushion in your lap and then place your mudra on the cushion. That's very supportive for the forearms and the hands here. Closing your eyes. There's always a little bit of preparation work to do before we are ready to open our practice. Softening the gaze, closing the eyes, tuning in. Tuning into your ability to listen to the flow of energy. Imagine that you are sitting on the banks of a river, gently flowing river, or a stream bubbling along listening to the sound of the water, this peaceful, harmonious sound of nature flowing from source in the mountains, the springs underground, towards the union with the sea, the ocean, This is the journey of your soul. As you visualize this river, imagine that the energy within your body is flowing like the river. Perhaps you visualize a blue, emerald, aquamarine colors for the flowing of energy within. From the sacral area, at the pelvic floor, the bladder and kidney organs, and traveling along the spine or down the leg, And as you come into this awareness, begin to meditate on the stream of emotions the intimacy that is invited with our emotions. Imagine that all of your feelings, your emotions are moving along with the waters of the river. And that as they travel along the channels that are carved out by this moving body of water, you become intimate with your own emotions. Our mantra for today is uh, invoking Saraswati, the deity of intuitive intelligence, of this learning wisdom of the self, imaginative creative aspect within all of us. Inhale. Om I'm Saraswati Ye Namaha. Om I'm Saraswati Ye Namaha. Om I'm Saraswati Ye Namaha. Om Om Om. Take a full breath here. And then as you exhale, allow the breath to flow with the river of life. Opening your eyes. 
releasing your mutra, flexing and curling and uncurling your fingers, wriggling them. And if you have had your cushion on your lap, remove your cushion. We're going to start with some tapping. And so I'm going to invite you to come up onto your feet for standing, and then we're going to move into a dangling pose. So let's start with some tapping. So our kidney and uh, bladder meridians are running um, down the back of the bladder. Meridian runs along the back of the legs so all the way down to the little toe. Um, and sort of, sort of starts here at the inner eye and then round the back around the left of the spine down to the inner toe. And the kidney um, starts at the sole of the foot and travels along the inside of our leg up through the center and sort of comes up here to the top of the chest. So we'll do some full body tapping and we'll start with the, let's start with the kidney at the front here. So curling your fingers, very gently folding in the four fingers. And so we'll just start with some gentle tapping around the chest here and then down the center here. And then coming into the groin area, let's tap all the way down the inside of the leg, down towards the ankle. And you're invited to tap up and down here for a few rounds. We're not going to be very scientific about this today. Just generally allowing the waters to move through our body as we reflect on this experience of working with the element of water, nourishing, healing, yielding, surrendering qualities associated with water. So this is gonna be my final round, tapping on the kidney meridian. And I'm gonna lift my foot so I can tap on the sole of each foot, because that's where the uh, kidney meridian begins. And then the other foot. And when you're seated today, you might take any opportunity to massage the sole of your foot. So let's switch our focus onto the bladder. So this time we'll start on the inner eye here, corner of the inner eye, and go over the head, round the back of the head. And then obviously there's gonna be a place where you can't reach my friends because how more dexterous we might be. So wherever you can, we're gonna take advantage here to tap on the kidneys as well, the buttocks. And then let's walk down the back of the legs with our hands tapping as we go. Focus around the back of the knees, a great place to focus. And then all the way to the little toe and then up legs again. all the way, wherever you can reach, the back of the head to the corner of the eye. Let's go around again. And as you tap, you might want to silently chant our mantra, Om Aim Saraswati Ye Namaha, or perhaps I let go, I flush out. I release, I surrender, or I move into uh, an intimate connection with my imagination, my emotions, my um, intuition. All of these qualities that we associate with the full moon, uh, the lunar energies and the element of water, um, jar, is the most yin-like of elements. So let's do one more round on our ladder meridian, taking the opportunity to tap around the kidneys, back of the neck, back of the skull, and down to the inner corners of the eye. And let's just shake it all out. Shaking is great for releasing emotion, expressing emotion. You'll often find when we are feeling intense emotion, our bodies tend to shake, vibrate with energy. Now for your dangling, you can use the support of the wall. 
So you can bring your buttocks up towards the wall, your ankles, uh, your heels slightly forward, you can bend into your knees. And then as you inhale, lengthen. And then as you exhale, hinge forward from your hips with your crown reaching forward and then fold down towards the F. Fingertips can come to rest on the F hip. So if you have your back on the wall, what you'll find is, and here's a wall here, that the wall is supporting you here. So you can hang out in your dangling quite comfortably. Another option you might want to use is have a bolster or a large pillow, and perhaps you place your hands on there and rest the back of your, um, rest your eyebrow center or the top of your crown on your bolster or large pillows, bit of furniture, the side of the sofa, for example, or the bed. Another option is to have your hands resting on the earth or on bricks. Another option is to wrap your hands around the back of your legs, especially your knees or your ankles. Wherever you are, the intention is to draw the crown down towards the earth and then the tailbone up towards the sky. So you've hinged from your hips, deep bend or a softer bend in your knees. Dangling is a great asana, this forward fold, Uttanasana, Uttanasana for releasing um, the hamstrings and then activating the bladder meridian in particular, kidney organs, the sacral shape, um, Swadhisthan chakra here, the sacral area with this forward fold. Om Aim Saraswati Ye Namaha. And release the tension. Soften the shoulders. Soften the joints. If you wish, you can always place your hands on your kidneys as well here. So this might be an option here. So if you, especially if you get a lot of lower back ache, or you feel um, you have sort of kidney infections or bladder infections, placing your warm hands here on the kidney organ area can be very comforting. Three more breaths here in Uttanasana, this dangling variation, either with your forearms resting on a pillow, your head resting on a pillow or bolster, hands resting on the earth or on bricks, your buttocks against the wall, your hands on your kidneys, so many variations within this one pose. And imagine here the, the draw of the tide, the pull of the toe, this gravitational force acting on the body of water within you, just as the moon acts on the body of the oceans. From here, my friends, we are going to come directly onto our knees and move into Balasana Child's Pose. So bend into your knees, bring your knees onto the earth. Now, my friends, your option is to take wide-legged or legs together Balasana. Rest your eyebrows centered directly on the earth or on a cushion. Hands can be alongside your body, palms face up. Surrender here in Balasana. Remember, you can always pad your blank, your mat with blankets so they have the extra comfort. If you have those faux sheepskins, that's a really great idea as well. The Swadhisthan um, Chakra and this full moon in Pisces, drawing us towards a the cold, wintry months ahead. 
as we move towards the equinox, the winter solstice. This abounding sense of the nights drawing in, of going into a dark period. And when I talk about dark periods, the retreat within the cave, within the cave, this retreat within. And darkness is the place in which the potentiality for life is nurtured. The budding seeds are planted so that this potential can surge forward and rise up and express itself in the spring. Three more breaths here. Inhaling, rise up with your crown. If your knees are not wide, take your knees wide here. Again, lots of options if it doesn't feel comfortable here. You can always have a blanket underneath the sit, sit, sit bones. You can always roll up a blanket and place it underneath the ankles. That can feel really comforting. So if you roll up the end of the blanket, that's going to go underneath your ankles. You can see this is a very thick blanket. So the inside of my ankles are on the rolled up bit. The rest of my feet are on a nice cozy bit of the blanket. We're going to move into Suchirandasana, the threading of the needle. Place the left hand on the earth and draw the right fingertips up to the sky. Bring the thumb and the little finger together, Varuna Mudra. This is the elemental, water element mudra. And then thread that right arm underneath you. Rest your right ear and shoulder directly onto a cushion or onto the earth. Take your left hand and place it on your lower back, on your kidneys here. And you can give yourself a little gentle rub here. So you're having this very um, spot, rotational um, pose ringing out the kidneys, ringing out the bladder, um, so that we can nourish the entirety of the being, lubricate the rest of the self. Your hand on your lower back can be face down, palm face down, or palm face up, wherever you feel drawn to, my friends. Let's take deep breaths here. Om I'm Saraswati Namaha. I am sensitive and attuned to the emotion, the yearning of the emotional self. I am sensitive and attuned to the emotional yearning of the self. I am sensitive and attuned to the emotional yearning of the self. Inhale, bring the left hand to the earth to support you and rise up, releasing that right arm from underneath you. Let's draw the left arm up to the sky, bring your hands into your Varuna Mudra, little finger and thumb connecting. This is the water balancing mudra, thread the arm underneath you, bring your left ear and shoulder to the earth or onto your cushion. And again, take your right hand onto the lower back, palm face down, gentle rub, or palm face up. This threaded needle variation of balasana, suchirandasana. You may have noted that during this cycle, you have been overly sensitive, overly emotional. Perhaps criticism hits hard. Perhaps you feel overwhelmed. 
This is when we've moved into the element, water element, and have become submerged in the emotion. We want to invite ourselves to be tuned in, to ride the waves of the emotions, but yet be able to practice non-attachment. So we are emotionally responsive rather than emotionally reactive. It's sort of sense of neutrality or imp impartiality. This is a radical act to be able to become impartial or neutral as a process of reflecting or becoming aware of the emotions, of witnessing them, and then moving into whichever state that you are drawn into without feeling as if you're drowning in those emotions. So the Varuna Mudra that we're adopting is a water balancing mudra, and this will help us to balance the strength or intensity of emotions when they threaten to burst the dam. Three more breaths here. Inhale to rise up. Take a moment here. Now you'll notice that with having your knees here, you've probably been really feeling the constriction at the back of the knees. So we're gonna move into our saddle. Uh, or sort of dragonfly pose with our legs open. This is also known as Upavista Konasana. So again, my friends, this is where I'm going to invite you to take care of yourself, your options. Have yourself up against a wall so that the wall, so that your kidneys and the wall are connected. That will support you. Your legs can be extended, fully extended. They might be very wide or they might be a little bit closer together. That's okay. As long as they feel, remember what we want to do is become aware of our subtle edges. Be mindful of those subtle edges and play at those subtle edges, not move beyond them. The other option for you, my friends, is to use cushions or rolled up blankets underneath the knee so you have some support there. That is really lovely experience to place support underneath the knees. And then perhaps you have some large pillows, a low footstool in front of you, so that when you hinge forward, you can rest your hands, your forearms, your eyebrow center on some support. So, or if you are, uh, you have the reach to come towards the earth, then you may choose to do that, or you may choose to create some props for yourself. And I will always go for prop, props because let's just sort out my bolster. There we go. So when you are ready, my friends, and you've created what you wish to have for your forward fold here in Upavista Konasana, lengthen and then hinge forward from the hips and come to rest on the earth with your forearms, on blocks, on support, whatever is available to you, my friends. You could choose to do this in front of a sofa or a chair and then soften the chair by placing some blankets on there or something soft. So we will all be in different places, each of us in our own hydrating, nourishing, tender place. And if you wish, you, you can come into your Swadhisthan Mudra here by crossing the middle finger over the index, interlacing the ring and little fingers. The tips of the index are together, the nails of the middle fingers are together, and then the tips of the thumbs come to touch the middle fingertips.
we'll be here for a while and what you may discover, and you'll certainly feel this now on the inner thighs here. So remember what the remember that the kidney meridians run alongside the inner legs here. So and then up the abdomen. So you're really um, activating the pran that's flowing through the kidney meridian. This is also a place where you might take the opportunity to tap along the inner legs. This is your practice. You're at home. You can intuitively um, be drawn towards a softening of your approach to your practice. Reflect on the inner workings of your approach to your practice. What is the inner working that takes place for you when you practice yoga? Do the inner workings bring up sense of failure or criticism or competitiveness or judgment or discomfort or pain? Or do the inner workings of yoga help you to be in a place of calm or equanimity or restoration? or harmony that encourage introspection, um, that invite healing and surrender. Your practice of yoga, your practice of yin yoga is a journey of traveling uncharted seas. And there's often an element of the unknown and so we explore that unknown. We become aware of that unknown with sensitivity, with attunement. That subtle edge tells us a little bit about what our relationship is with our body, with our selves. Yoga is an opportunity to quieten the sounds of the external world, the noise of the outside world. And if that quietening doesn't take place within your practice, ease back from the edges so that you can become quiet and still in that moment to hear the bubbling of the water underneath the earth's terrain. Three more breaths here. Your variation of Upavista Kanasana. Inhale, keeping your chin tucked in, unravel the spine and rise up. Removing your creations that you have used to support yourself. Bend into your knees here, but not too much. Let's keep a little mountain in the knees. And so let's give ourselves a little bit of a massage here. So the soles of the feet, the little toe, remember, so we've got the outer edge of the foot and the little toe is the bladder and sole of the foot is the kidney. And then around the ankles, the inner leg, along the shin here. And when you get to the knees, rub the back of the knees. Maybe you go down the back of the calves here as well, down to the oculus tendon. Just a massage here for yourself, gentle massage. And we're going to move into Sphinx Salambar Bujandasan. Now, for this, my friends, you can have your blankets on the mat so that when you are lying in sphinx your rib cage is supported by a blanket or a cushion or a pillow you can also place the blanket so where your forearms are resting it's nice and comfortable there so rolling onto your abdomen here now the wider you have your feet here 
the less intense is the experience in your uh, spinal, in your lower back and the compression that you feel on your kidneys. So think about here where you would like to be. So I'm gonna place my baldy blanket right underneath my rib cage so that it's kind of, how my lower ribs are resting on the, on the rolled up blanket or cushion. You can have your feet close together or feet wide. You can bring your hands into your Swadhisthan Mudra and rest in your forearms here, which is the option I'm going for. You can take your elbows out and rest your eyebrows center on the back of your hands. That's in crocodile pose. If your low, if the compression on your kidneys, uh, the extension of the spine feels too intense for you. So come into your variation of Sphinx, Salamba Bujandasan. And here again, my beautiful friends, I invite you to connect with your mantra, your mantra in Sanskrit, Om Aim Saraswati Ye Namaha, or a, a, a sort of intuitive expression of that in which you are connecting with your inviting connection to your intuition, your creative aspects, your imagination. Uh, perhaps drawing on nourishment, healing, or surrendering. Nurturing love and romance. Nurturing um, potentiality in creation of literature, poetry, of art, of your philosophy of the mind. All of these are the qualities that are associated with Saraswati and the element of water, Jav. So as we flush out, we clear, then we lay the seeds for potentiality. So out with the old and in with the new, is very kind of like a, a metaphor that describes our practice of the in when we're working with the bladder and the kidney when we're working with water. And when we think about Pisces and this iconography of Pisces, we have these two fish swimming in those opposite directions. So there's this sort of either moving forward or moving back. This might be this push and pull, the pull, uh, push and pull of the tides, the ebb and flow of water. This sort of wanting to go with the flow of water or wanting to resist and go in the opposite direction. So we can be very indecisive in this period as well. This is why listening and tuning into our emotions, thinking about intuitively what our intelligence, deep intelligence is telling us, why introspection helps in this process. Three more breaths here in your Salamba Bujangasan or Makrasan crocodile pose. With your feet close together or wide apart as you wish, my friends. Visualize the flow of water from the kidneys down the leg. Deep blue aquamarine with each out breath. Pressing into the hands of you, release your mudras. Let's come up onto your knees, onto your hands. Let's sway here backwards and forwards for a few moments. Undulate the spine, cow. That will feel very releasing. I mean, this is intense work for the kidneys. I mean, I feel it intensely in my kidneys and I wasn't even practicing for that full holding of that asana as you were. So this is intense. 
So release the spine here by some undulations. Cat cow. From here, I'm gonna move into a forward fold. And the forward fold is the caterpillar of Paschimottanasana. So come onto your sit bones. You might want to sit here on your um, lovely blanket or cushion. Now, my friends, options for you, extend the legs, practice this without props. Lengthening here. And then as you exhale, hinging from the hips and folding forward towards the feet and resting your hands wherever they land. If you want to prop up, which is always my favorite preferred option, you can place a bolster or some large pillows underneath your knees so that when you fold forward, your abdomen and your heart rest on your thighs. And your hands can rest on your legs or on your feet here. For me, I like this particularly because my hands can reach my feet and I can give myself a little foot massage. You can also place a cushion or a pillow on your knees and then rest your eyebrows to on the cushion or pillow. You can create little stacking hands on the one potato, two potato style, and rest your eyebrow center on top of your hands. So again, my friends, Paschimottanasana, forward fold, or sometimes called caterpillar, is an inward looking, introspective asana. And so I invite you to come into the yearning of the body here. whatever it is that you are yearning in this moment. The beauty of water is its unseen strength, its ability to carve through rocks, carve through mountains, to shape the terrain of the earth. But its ability to move gently, softly, smoothly around pebbles rocks shining them, polishing them. The way that you approach this elemental energy can be yielding, nurturing, or it can be intense and powerful. So the intention of your practice, yoga is where intention matters. Can be uh, to surrender, to trust in life and surrender. Or it can be to find peace or calm in stormy seas as waves break around you. It could be your intention to retreat into a dreamlike space of compassion and love. 
It could be nostalgia that you are seeking or yearning for what was. It could be a powerful clearing that you are seeking. So intention, this, the quality of water is so mutable. So um, mold, you can mold it, shape it, direct, guide it, or be directed and guided by it. Three more breaths here in Paschimottanasana. Again, visualize the flowing river of deep blue aquamarine on the out breath. And then when you inhale, begin to walk your hands back towards you, rise up, release and remove your uh, props, wherever you have available, how you supported yourself. And we're going to come directly into frog pose, mandukasana. And here I invite you, this is where really padding will feel great here. So you want to pad your knees, your shins, your feet by placing folded blankets there. So let's just rearrange it. I'll have my blanket there like that. Now I'll open up this blanket here. So frog pose. You may want to have some available, some props here. Your knees are wide. You want your ankles and your knees aligned and your feet slightly flexed. Hips are wide open here. You can rest your forearms on the earth or on a bolster. You can be quite high up from the earth here. You also have the option, my friends, of placing something underneath you so that when you are, if you do not feel comfortable here, so you can have your lower body supported by a prop, a bolster, some large pillows, and that can also help you to create more space here. This is going to be experienced in the inner, in the hip flexors, in the inner thighs. We're not going to be in frog for very long. And remember, you can also come into your Swadhisthan Mudra or your Varuna Mudra, water balancing Mudra, where you bring your thumb to your ring finger. And I'm going to share an observation about how I'm feeling in this practice is that I am like perspiring here. So I feel like there's a sheen of water on the outside of my body. And if that, or if you have an urge perhaps to go to the toilet, this is like the flushing out of the water, the releasing of the dams of the water. So this practice for me is certainly doing its work don't know what the experience is like for you, but reflect on that experience. You might find that you lower towards the earth a little bit more the longer you stay in frog pose. Remember, you can have your eyebrows centered on the earth here. Three more breaths here. And from here, my friends, we want to move slowly. So let's bring the knees, the toes towards each other and bring the knees a little bit closer. So, and then sit back in child's pose. So we'll bring your knees closer here. So closing the hips.
three more breaths here in Balasana. And then today, I'm going to invite you to come into your Shavasana so we can do a very short yoga nidra session. So get comfortable here. Um, you may want to set your timer depending on how long you want to stay in Shavasana after the practice. So add on eight minutes plus whatever time you want. So you have your nice little chimes going, perhaps 10, another 10 minutes after class, another 15 minutes after class. So let's come into your Shavasana. Now, as you come to the earth, take your time here to support yourself. Perhaps you place a prop underneath your knee, bolsters and pillars underneath your knees. Perhaps you raise your feet and put your feet up on a bolster or some cushion. Come into your variation. Perhaps you lie on your side. So you don't have to lie on your front, you can lie on your side. Use cushions, use pillows, get comfortable here. Closing your eyes, settling, settling, settling here. Welcome home to this intuitive being, the creative being. As we prepare for ourselves to come into a short practice of yoga nidra. Become aware of the sound of my voice, the sounds in your environment, both near and far, the sound of your breath. Allow these sounds to come and go. Become aware of the sensation of the earth below you and all the points of connection between your body and the ground. Become aware of the feeling of softness of the skin, the fabrics, the hardness of the bones and the hardness of the earth. And then pay attention to the flowing rivers of energy, of water within gentle flowing waters. within. Begin to observe the flow of the breath, the ebb and, flow, ebb and flow, the in and out, the rise and fall. Connect with the heart space, the anahata. Visualize Deep blue, aquamarine, emerald color here. And now visualize the Swadhisthan chakra at the pelvic area. And here visualize deep blue, aquamarine, emerald. And traveling between these two pool, pools of water is the swirling currents of your empathy, your compassion, your emotions of love, of tenderness, of nourishment, of care, hydrating, healing. Now take your awareness to the base of the throat, that soft, tender place. Here, visualize a deep pool of water, still water. Reflective, like a mirror in which you can see the moon. 
Now take your awareness to the third eye, just between the eyebrows, the Agnya Chakra. So from the Vishu to the Agnya Chakra. And here, again, visualize a still body of water shimmering in the night sky, reflecting the full moon. Now visualize this current of water, of emotional waters, of imaginative, intuitive waters from the Swadhisthan, Anahat, the Vishud, and the Agnya Chakra, all connected with one steady stream of flowing energy. And deep blue, aquamarine, emerald, revitalizing, rehydrating, re-nourishing energy. And now I invite you to arrive at the center of the crown, the Sahasara Chakra. And here, visualize a waterfall. The light of the sun here at the crown, catching the droplets of water as they cascade. Rainbows reflected in the droplets of water. All of the shades of night and day, all of the colors of night and day flowing from crown to Sadistan. And now finally from the crown, watching the water flow down towards the root, the Muladhar Chakra. And here is the ocean, the vast ocean, in which all of the wonders of the world, all the wonders of you, all the wonders of the loved ones, the family, the friends, meet in this universal ocean of compassion, of connection, of harmony. From the crown, Sahasara, through the soma, just at where the hairline meets the forehead, is the full moon. Then to the third eye, the Agnya Chakra, to the throat, the Shudh Chakra, to the heart, Anahata, passing through Manipur, to the Swadhisthan, to the root, Muladhar. The element of water, hydrating, nourishing. Meditating here. Your practice of yoga nidra here is at an end with me. You may choose to close your practice here, rising up to a seat, or you may choose to be in this restorative place for a timing, for a time of your own choosing, and then arising to close your practice when you are ready. Inhale to rise up if you are closing your practice now. Coming into your Swadhisthan Mudra, crossing the index over, crossing the middle over the index, tips of the index, tips of the middle fingernails, the thumbs coming to the middle fingers, ring and a little finger interlaced. Om, I'm Saraswati Namaha. Om, I'm Saraswati Namaha. Om, I'm Saraswati Namaha. 
Om Shanti 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 Tanyavat Tanyavat Tanyavat